Welcome to Central Christian Church Bible Story Time. My name is Miss Nikki, and each week I'm going to share with you a true story from the Bible. The Bible is a big book made up of a lot of little books written by a variety of people who were inspired by God to tell his story. Because they were inspired and instructed by God, we know that these stories are true, and when we read them, we learn who God is, why he created us, and what he wants for our lives. Before we read about God, let's talk to him. Now, usually when we pray, we fold our hands together like this, or maybe like this, but today I want you to put your hands together like this with your palms up, because we're going to imagine that all our worries and troubles are leaving our hands and being given to God. It will also help us imagine that we're ready to receive the message that God has for us today. Dear Lord, thank you for all of your wonderful gifts. Thank you for all of the children and their parents who are listening today. I pray that they will know that God loves them and created them special and unique with a purpose. Lord, we thank you for all of the blessings that surround us. We thank you for our family, our friends, our teachers, and our churches. Lord, we pray that you will help us to hear your message today and that we will learn more about you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Before we start our story time, I'd like you to close your eyes one more time for just a second. What do you see? When I close my eyes, I see nothing but darkness. And I'll bet that's what you see too. You can open your eyes now. That's where our story begins, with darkness. Now, here are words that I'm going to read directly from the Bible. You know, boys and girls, the Bible doesn't actually say anything. You have to pick it up and read it. It's not going to yell, hey, you, read me. You have to actually pick it up and read it for yourself. And if you still have trouble reading, you can ask mom or dad or anyone who loves you to read it with you because there is nothing better than reading God's word for yourself. Are you ready? Here is the very beginning of God's story. In the beginning, God created the sky and the earth. The earth was empty and had no form. Darkness covered the ocean and God's spirit was moving over the water. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. So he divided the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. Evening passed and morning came. This was the first day. Then God said, let there be something to divide the water in two. So God made the air to divide the water in two. Some of the water was above the air and some of the water was below it. God named the air sky. Evening passed and morning came. This was the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered together so the dry land will appear. And it happened. God named the dry land earth and he named the water that was gathered together seas. God saw that this was good. Then God said, let the earth produce plants. Some plants will make grain for seeds. Others will make fruit with seeds in it. Every seed will produce more of its own kind of plant. And it happened. The earth produced plants. Some plants had grain for seeds. The trees made fruit with seeds in it. Each seed grew its own kind of plant. God saw that all this was good. Evening passed and morning came. This was the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the sky to separate day from night. These lights will be used for signs, seasons, days, and years. They will be in the sky to give light to the earth. And it happened. So God made the two large lights. He made the brighter light to rule the day. He made the smaller light to rule the night. He also made the stars. God put all these in the sky to shine on the earth. They are to rule over the day and over the night. 
He put them there to separate the light from the darkness. God saw that all these things were good. Evening passed and morning came. This was the fourth day. Then God said, let there be water filled with living things and let birds fly in the air above the earth. So God created the large sea animals. He created every living thing that moves in the sea. The sea is filled with these living things. Each one produces more of its own kind. God also made every bird that flies and each bird produces more of its own kind. God saw that this was good. God blessed them and said, have many young ones and grow in number. Fill the water of the seas and let the birds grow in number on the earth. Evening passed and morning came. And this was the fifth day. Are you ready? This is my favorite part. Then God said, let the earth be filled with animals and let each produce more of its own kind. Let there be tame animals and small crawling animals and wild animals and let each produce more of its own kind. And it happened. So God made the wild animals, the tame animals, and all the small crawling animals to produce more of their own kind. God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image and likeness and let them rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the tame animals, over all the earth and over all the small crawling animals on the earth. So God created human beings in his image. In the image of God, he created them. He created them male and female. God blessed them and said, have many children and grow in number. Fill the earth and be its master. Rule over the fish in the sea and over the birds in the sky. Rule over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, look, I have given you all the plants that have grain for seeds, and I have given you all the trees whose fruit have seeds in them. They will be food for you. I have given all the green plants to all the animals to eat. They will be food for every wild animal, every bird of the air, and every small crawling animal. And it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and it was very good. Evening passed, and morning came. This was the sixth day. The story's not over yet. So the sky, the earth, and all that filled them were finished. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. God blessed the seventh day and made it a holy day. That means a special day. He made it holy because on that day he rested. He rested from all the work he had done in creating the world. Wow. We serve a great big God. He made the light, the sky, the land, the sea, the fish, and the animals. He made the sun, the moon, and the stars. He made green grass and palm trees and big blue oceans. He made flounders and lobsters and warthogs and grizzly bears and honeybees. But God's final creation was the only one that he made in his image. You and me, people. We learned that God created a man and a woman, both in his image, to be special, to rule over and take care of the earth. He wanted them to have children so that there would be lots of boys and girls and men and women made in God's image to fill his beautiful new world. That's the true story of how God created the world. In our next story, we're going to learn more about God's first man and woman and find out what we can learn from their example. But until then, I want you to know that God created you. He loves you. He made you special and unique. And he wants you to talk to him, to read his word, and to follow his ways. I also want you to know that people who love God love you. If you live in Brownsville and don't go to church, we hope that you'll come to Central Christian Church, either here in our building for our services on Sunday morning or watch our service on the live stream on Facebook. 
If you don't live nearby, I hope you and your family will find a church where people love Jesus and can share his love with you. Remember that God created you special and unique. He loves you very much and wants you to follow his ways. Check back next week for our Bible story time from Central Christian Church. We love you and we hope you have a great day.